In the last 16 weeks, we've only had two isolated weeks where the S&P 500 has returned negative for that week. But after today's trade, are we about to make it two weeks in a row? 2024 is already shaking things to the core with the big Fed minutes just around the corner. So as we enter historically, what is the worst two week period in the year? Should we be concerned? And if yes, how do we hedge that risk? Today, we discuss that unusual dark pool activity and where we can find value in the current market. So let's talk about it all together. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the daily recap show where we talk about stocks and the financial markets. My name is Chase. If you like this video, please subscribe, hit that notification bell, guys, like this video, leave a comment. It's good for the algorithm. Let's get into it. Quite a brutal day in the market. The big names, look at the Magnificent Seven technology as a whole very very red on the day the only outperformer was google we saw consumer defensives as a sector perform the best and every other sector was red on the day including energy healthcare and utilities there were green components in each sector look at intel look at texas instruments jp morgan Burke b we currently have a trade here in jp morgan and then various other names in each sector but overall pretty red day definitely a win to the bears now let's hop on the charts now all of the indices were negative the s p 500 was down 0.6 percent 0.79 percent for the nasdaq 0.72 for mid caps and 1.04 percent here for the s p 600 the iwm the russell 2000 was down 1.28 percent yields didn't do much on the day and that didn't affect bonds either but looking at the s p 500 on a more granular level there's some very notable things here that i'd like to point out firstly it definitely was a red day that's a red body candle but we did see quite a lot of buy side support with this long wick especially moving all the way up to the halfway point in the candle that's very very key second thing to note is that sellers came in exactly at the same place that they did here on tuesday and they actually came in significantly above the 4920 low area which is a key place we were looking at this weekend so we got so we got buy side support in the exact same level that we found buy side support last tuesday now we did actually form a gap as you can see right there so definitely a win to the bears overall what the bulls need to do tomorrow is push up into the open and then go ahead and retake this gap so it's going to look something like that that's what tomorrow's price action needs to look like for the bulls especially in the shortened trading week what the bears need to do is go ahead recapture this wick low and actually close below that they want to go and make a lower low and then they can go attack the 4920 area so the work is cut out for the bears the work is cut out for the bulls definitely a win for the bears but i would say that based on that late day strength there is a bit of momentum forming in the bull side looking at the five minute chart and you can see it on a more granular level here's the gap that's where we opened and then you know the sellers took us all the way down up until about midday where we saw this huge green candle and that was sort of the confirmation that we're going to get sort of like a late day rally and then we pushed all the way up to the close there was volatility as you can see right here but all in all we closed at about the 4975 4980 level and found pretty good support at the 4950 level now looking at sectors, so we could see that the best performing sector was Staples and GDX. Now would I consider this a defensive rotation? I would probably say no because healthcare wasn't there as well as utilities. These were actually negative on the day. So what essentially this is telling us that this was less of a rotation and more of just a liquidation. People pulling money out of the market, building some cash, waiting for better prices in the future. Now we did see a bit of a bid up in the market early morning, but this was mostly led by technology. Look at the worst performing sectors, semiconductors, software, and XLK technology as a whole. You can see that from here, this 1230 area, we got a bid up in semiconductors, technology and software too, this light blue line and this dark green line. Compared to all the other sectors, for example, metals and mining, they actually continued the downtrend towards the end of the day. And so too did most of these sectors. So that late day bullish action we saw was actually led by technology. They have been the leaders so far this year. They are the biggest sectors and we really do wanna see support in them first and then the other sectors can follow with the flow. So that's exactly what we're seeing. So that does support some form of strength coming in tomorrow, but all in all, it definitely was a win for the bears. And if we do see continuation of this and a bit up into like staples, maybe some more healthcare and utilities, 
then we will be seeing a defensive rotation. But as it is right now, today was just a liquidation, just people pulling money out of the market, drawing some cash. And that's why we got the price action we did today. Now the weekend poll has just wrapped up guys. Thank you all for voting. And we've had some very interesting results. Normally the results are actually very close to 50-50, but what we are seeing is a definite win to the best substantially. 63% of you believe the next 100 points in the S&P 500 will be down. Only 37% of you said up. But this poll should be used as a contrarian indicator because last week the majority set up and the market actually finished lower on the week. However, if you did buy the dip last week, you did extract some alpha on the bear side. That being said, 63% of you are bearish. I'd love to see where this takes us towards the end of this week. Looking at market breadth in the last 12 months, according to Bofa's quant strategy, only 26% of stocks outperformed the index. And this is where it gets really crazy because we do know that breadth has improved substantially in the last three to four months. It still has been tech heavy. However, we have seen breadth improvements in small caps, mid caps, and the broader market as a whole. But what you got to understand is that in the last 12 months, the majority of gains have come from the mega cap 50, mostly because they're the ones who made money in 2023 who improved earnings. And we can't forget that the majority of last year was mostly led by like the top 50 stocks in the S&P 500. They held all of the gains, especially the mag seven. However, I do see this as fairly bullish because we are starting to see market breadth trough, especially at these lower levels right here. And we should see improvements throughout 2024. Now, looking at a trade we're currently in, this is the NASDAQ in a four day week after the President's Day Feb OPEX combo. Now, the trade is enter Tuesday, exit Thursday, and you're looking for a return of about negative 0.69% on an individual basis, it tends to be more substantial. You are looking to extract alpha on the short side, 22 losses, which is what you wanna see, seven wins, a very high probability trade, but you really wanna be out of this trade by Friday because Friday tends to be quite positive with 20 wins, nine losses. That being said, this also does align with the seasonal factors we do experience in February. The next two weeks in the market tends to be the second worst two week period in the year, and this does align with that. Now let's actually talk about the economy guys. GDP now is currently sitting at 2.9%. So the economy is roaring and this is above the blue chip consensus of about one to 2%, maybe at the high end 2.5%. And at the same time, we're also seeing inflation come down substantially. Now, yes, we did get a bit of an inflation scare last week, but you have to look at it on a year over year basis. Inflation is still coming down. We still had a year over year deceleration in inflation. And ideally that's what you wanna see. Now, Goldman Sachs do have a PPI and CPI sort of trothing around the June FOMC year at this 2.22 level. Maybe it'll get a little bit lower in September 2024 here at this 2.1 level. That being said, we are getting towards this two handle that the Fed is really looking for, especially on the lower end of this two handle. Now, at the same time as GDP is growing, inflation is coming down, Goldman Sachs predict that the labor market is actually going to trough at monthly employment jobs at 100,000. Now, currently for Q1, we're looking at about 211,000 and then 125 for Q2 and then 100 and 100 for Q3, Q4. And this is actually really, really good because this does look like a trough. And from there, we should see improvements in 2025, at least according to Goldman Sachs. And we're also potentially starting to see something in the real estate market, something of a rebound. Pending home sales, this red line and the 30 year mortgage rate, which is right here inverted, by the way, do track each other very, very closely. And if rates are to come down with Fed rate cuts, we should see the mortgage rate increase right here, which will represent a decrease. And then pending home sales should follow suit as well. So we should see a rebound in the housing market, particularly in the middle of the year. Once we do get those rate cuts, call it May, June, July, and then the flow on effects from that, we should really start to see this pick up near the October, November area. Now this faster economic growth is actually going to lead to an increase in EPS in the S&P 500 in 2024. And Goldman Sachs actually have some really interesting data right here. They believe that if current US GDP was to increase by 100 basis points, that's going to represent $8 worth of increase in the S&P 500 uh, earnings per share estimate. So they currently have it at 241, pegging GDP growth at 2.4%. GDP now is currently at 2.9%. So you could probably add a little bit of upside to this, but the GDP now figures are on a quarter by quarter basis. 
This is for the full year in 2024. And I think this is actually a very reasonable estimate from Goldman Sachs. But if we do get anything above this, call it 3%, 3.5%, do expect anywhere from $4 to $8 worth of an increase in earnings per share for the S&P 500. We do know that GDP surprised amazingly to the upside in 2023. Can it be different in 2024? It could be. There is a ton of deficit spending still left in this year and it is an election year. So we could definitely see material upside to what Goldman Sachs expect in 2024. 24. Now with rate cuts, where should you put your money to work? According to Bofa right here, value is actually a pretty good place, especially after rate cuts. Once you cut rates, about one month, three months, and six months later, value tends to outperform growth by a wide margin, 2%, 2%, and 1.5% right here. We also see that bonds do outperform stocks, so it's definitely good to have an allocation to value or the broader market uh, as the Fed cuts rates, as well as bonds and stocks as a whole. What you also want to look for is some form of a pullback in small caps anywhere from one to three months out looking for a huge surge that normally comes six to 12 months later in small caps. Now, what value sectors and what small cap sectors should you be putting your money to work? Well, a great sector is actually XLE. The reason being is because energy is the most decorrelated sector to tech, and it's also a standout on a capital return basis. Energy stocks are buying back a lot of stock, and they do have quite a substantial dividend yield. I do believe that Chevron is actually buying back $20 billion worth of their stock this year, and the current market cap is like $270 billion. So, you know, they're buying back like 7 to 8% of their stock, which is actually substantial. They do pay a dividend yield as well. So they are returning capital to shareholders. Looking at the actual valuation of energy. So on a PEG basis, it's looking pretty rough, but that's because earnings have decelerated a lot because of the price of oil and the supply demand imbalance. But you can see that on a next 12 month basis, a lot of that deceleration is already priced in trading at an 11.8 PE compared to the broader market, almost half of what the broader market is. And we can actually see here that on a free cash flow basis, 8.1% free cash flow yield. The 10 year is at 4.2%. And this right here, this is what they return back to shareholders. And like I said, Chevron is buying back about seven to 8% of their stock. You could see here that with the free cash flow yield at 8%, why wouldn't they return that to shareholders? Also on an EV to sales basis, I do like this metric quite a lot, 1.4X. So these companies make a lot of money and they are starting to return value back to their shareholders, especially in buybacks. They're sort of buying back stock at dirt cheap levels. So energy is a great place to put your money, especially if you do hold quite a lot of technology. You got a good growth theme right here. You get a value theme in energy and this should balance out return, especially as value is favored over growth if rate cuts do materialize, at least according to history. Now let's talk seasonality. This is the S&P 500 election cycle, this dark blue line right here versus 2024. We are clearly outperforming seasonality as a whole, but to be expected, the market has been very, very strong. Now in an election year, we normally get a fairly flat first quarter. Some would even say down before we do get an extended rally. But if we actually break it down even further, what we can see is that we normally get get like a flat period at the start of the year, then a bit of a rally right there. And trend is more important than the level. While we have just gone straight up, we haven't really had any consolidation. What we can expect next based on this is some form of consolidation and pullback. Now, I'm not saying we go all the way to these lows, even below the lows, but a minor pullback maybe to this key level right here or this key level right here would be normal for trend continuation to the upside in both instances. That being said, what we are really looking for any time between now, you know, late Feb, March and early April, we're sort of looking for a pullback to buy the dips for the rest of the year, especially since we are in an election year. Now, guys, looking at the JEX map, there's actually quite a lot to say. I really wasn't expecting the call gamma resistance to move to the 5100 area from the 5050 strike. That's very, very interesting. There is quite a lot of negative gamma on the tape, though, and there's a lot of negative gamma stretching all the way down to 4500. But that being said, we are slightly in a positive gamma environment and that means dealers will buy dips sell rips all the way to 5100 and that's probably where they're gonna want to take price over the next couple of weeks but do remember we are in the window of weakness and bears have opportunity right now to make that happen a couple of things we do have to be wary of is where does this reposition itself does more negative gamma come into the tape lower the positive gamma at the strike and if we do see that and this core gamma resistance moves to the 50 50 area 5000 area that's when we're going to become increasingly bearish. One thing to also note that the gamma flip zone is at 49.50 and I would say that between the 49.45 area and the 49.20 area as confirmed by the technical charts, that's going to be the key area that bears want to take us to this week. 
If we get there, we're going to look for buy side opportunities. But if we do get below those areas, below the 49.20 area, below the 49.45 area, things do become increasingly dangerous, especially for the bulls. And then we could see further sell side to lower levels, but we'll take it one day at a time. For now, we are sitting in a positive gamma environment looking for the 5100 area, even though we are in the window of weakness. But do be aware that anything can change, especially in this time period, because we are in the window of weakness. Now, looking at the seasonal chart, so we're actually following seasonality very, very well. And if we are to see a bit of a dead cat bounce in tomorrow's trade, that would be completely normal with seasonality. We actually do get a bit of a bounce up around this time period. And that's actually what we see for most of February. We get a down day, bounce, down day, bounce, down day. And that generally leads the price action to what normally is a negative February. So we are following that pretty well. If this dead cat bounce does turn into more strength to the upside because the market has been extremely strong, don't be surprised. That does tend to happen in these strong bull markets. Dead cat bounces tend to lead into rallies. Now, looking at the charts, this is the Russell 2000. So based on the weekend video, if you go watch the weekend video, I outlined some very, very key levels. One of them was 198 and 196. Now I did say that if we did come down in the Russell, the 198 level is an absolute key level to hold. This is exactly what we're doing. We did see a little bit of buy side support. However, this candle as a whole is not really convincing, especially with the gap we saw. So 196 is going to be an absolute crucial level to hold. Otherwise it does look grim for the IWM. So keep an eye on 198, 196 tomorrow in the Russell. 2000 looking at mid caps relatively strong this is actually an inside body candle however the fact that there was no buy side strength towards the end of the day is a bit worrisome we did close at the lows that being said this does look significantly stronger because we didn't gap down as much as the russell so the level we want to look out for is 2774 and 2747 and like you can see there's actually quite a while before we do get there at that level so mid caps looking relatively strong and they can actually see a couple more days of down side action before they do get to these critical levels. So mid caps, I think looking like the strongest index right now, looking at the equal weight. I mean, look at the equal weight. It's at this key pivotal point. Now buyers do need to step up. There is a, it can see a bit of selling, but something to note was that this actually was a green candle in the RSP. Yes, we did gap down, but it just shows that there was a lot of strength in the bulls towards the end of the day to finish green after the gap down. However, that also means we did get a bit of selling towards the end of the day. So so very mixed and mixed year in the RSP. What really, what we really need to see is a hold of this 158 level from there. We do get lower than that. There is a bit of support that we can still draw onto in the RSP, but ideally we don't want to go below the 156 level right here. Now looking at the NASDAQ, looking relatively weaker because we did actually go ahead and make a lower low with a wick in comparison to last week Tuesday. On a closing basis, it is an equal low and also an equal low based on this candle body right there. However, still an equal low and you know, the NASDAQ looking relatively weak. We did see a bit up at the end of the day in technology, semiconductors, but it still wasn't enough to par all of the losses we had. And now again, very similar to the S&P 500, bears need to push up and close this gap, take key support areas above and bears need to make a close below this week tomorrow because we are in a shortened trading week. All in all, it's very mixed and mixed with an edge to the bears. Looking at SMCI, this is a trade I said you guys should take. I said we're going to see one more capitulation down between 700, 750 area, and we will see buy side support. I just didn't think it was going to happen all in one day. And it just goes to show the strength of this name. Now, what you do want to see is you don't want to chase this. If you can get an entry, you know, at 700 again, go ahead and do that. It is value. And I do think at the 700, you are trading at 24x forward earnings. But if we actually have a look at the dark pools, we could see here that we did see big trades trades come in at these lower levels right here. Retail did come in at this level right here for SMCI. Now this isn't the full day because we did actually push up a little bit more, but you can see that at the same time, when we do get these big trades, we actually get massive reactions from it. And we did get one of these uh, trades today. Looking at Nvidia, the buy side strength wasn't as strong as SMCI, but that's because it wasn't 20% down on Friday. It was 4.58% down today. We did see quite a lot of buyers. However, do note that this was the last major low in Nvidia and we are actually starting to see buy side support 
which would actually support a higher low. And this actually does look bullish. I mean, you look at this price action is up, down, and then go higher. It's actually bullish. That's actually very, very bullish when you look at it like that. But that all depends if the bulls do go ahead and hold this low. But from what it is right now and the strength we're seeing in technology and just technology, software as a whole, semiconductors, at least the index, tomorrow we probably should push higher, especially with seasonality showing that we normally do get a dead cat bounce in tomorrow's trade. So yeah, all eyes on semiconductors, technology, and the market. All eyes tomorrow on NVIDIA, semiconductors, and technology. Now guys, data in the week ahead. So the main focus is gonna be the FOMC minutes and then PMIs, but really it's FOMC minutes. That's gonna be the big one. But if you've made it up until year, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe. Hit that notification bell, guys. Leave a comment. That really does help. And like this video. Cheers.